A new cosmic rebel has burst into the solar system, spinning faster than the laws of physics allow. An object that refuses to behave like anything natural. And just when we thought the uh, comet was the strangest wanderer, the universe is sending something even wilder, it seems. Our next story telling you more. The universe just got stranger. We thought 3i Atlas, with its impossible thrust and strange tail, giving rise to the alien tech theory, was the apex of celestial mystery. But now, NASA is tracking something far more weird. An asteroid moving in a way that simply should not be possible. This object is not merely accelerating unnaturally. It is breaking the spin barrier. Traditional asteroids and comets spin, but within predictable limits dictated by their tensile strength and gravitational forces. Exceed those limits and they disintegrate into dust. Yet, now 3i is rotating at a rate that should have torn it to shreds millennia ago. Its observed spin calculated by multiple independent observatories is beyond the theoretical maximum for a body of its estimated size and composition. It's like watching a car wheel spin so fast it should explode, but it simply doesn't. This is not a case of outgassing or asymmetrical ice distribution. The usual explanations for strange cometary behavior. This is a solid object, defying the very physics of cohesion. Scientists are stunned, admitting they have no conventional explanation. The only alternatives are truly mind-bending. Either the object possesses an unknown, incredibly strong material, or it is being held together by an artificial internal force field. The implications are staggering. If it's a natural phenomena, it requires a complete rewrite of our understanding of material science in extreme cosmic environments. If it is artificial, then it becomes chillingly literal. It's not just an asteroid, and it's not just like 3i Atlas. It is a piece of engineered hardware designed to withstand forces that would destroy natural rock. Bureau Report, Vion, World is One. Saudi Arabia, once the fortress of strict alcohol bans, has quietly cracked open the door. It has uncorked the portal for non-Muslim foreign residents. But there is a catch here and it goes straight for your wallet. The non-Muslim foreigners can enjoy alcohol there, but only if they earn enough money to qualify. They can purchase alcohol in Saudi Arabia if they earn more than 50,000 riyals or roughly $13,300 per month. According to reports, non-Muslim residents have to prove their income by showing a salary certificate. This in order to gain entry to the country's only liquor outlet located in Riyadh. The store opened last year for sales to foreign diplomats and recently extended access to non-Muslims with so-called premium residency status. Customers at the Riyadh outlet can make purchases under a monthly point-based allowance system. Reports suggesting new liquor stores are also being built in two cities elsewhere in the country. However, there have been no official there has been no official communication about the changes from the authorities. For the Saudi authorities, the motivations for expanding alcohol sales are clear. The kingdom is seeking more highly educated foreigners. Uh, this under the pressure to boost tourism and non-oil revenue as part of its economic diversification plan. In the past several years, the country has reversed a ban on women driving, allowed public entertainment, music and the mixing of genders and encouraged tourism. The pace of change highlights how delicate a task it is really to modernize the kingdom the birthplace of Islam and home to the religion's two holiest sites.
The United States Congress has initiated steps to restrict the Pentagon's authority to withdraw forces from South Korea and Europe. In fact, according to reports, the newly finalized 2026 National Defense Authorization Act keeps the U.S. troop levels in Europe and South Korea roughly where they stand today. And the bill bars the Pentagon from cutting the European deployment below 76,000 troops without first proving to the Congress that such reductions would not undermine American or NATO security interests. It applies similar safeguards in South Korea, where any drop below 28,500 troops would require guarantees that deterrence against North Korea remains fully intact and that regional allies have been consulted. The legislation also codifies into law the American hold on the NATO's most senior military position, the Supreme Allied Commander Europe. That role has always been filled by a U.S. general, and the U.S. Congress appears to make sure that it stays that way. These restrictions come amid reports that the Pentagon is contemplating scaling back forces in Europe and South Korea and even exploring whether to relinquish the NATO command post. It also comes amid reports that the United States wants Europe to take over the majority of NATO's defense capabilities from intelligence to missiles by 2027. According to reports, the United States is likely to retain the position of the NATO Supreme Command, but could offer some other top military posts to European partners. Reacting to the reports, the Pentagon said that it remains committed to strengthening the NATO while encouraging Europe to assume greater responsibility for its own security. The Congress bill also allocates $400 million over two years for the Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative and outlines the limited circumstances under which undelivered U.S. funded equipment for Ukraine can be repurposed for American military needs. In fact, uh, uh, the American, uh, in fact, the annual defense policy bill, the annual defense policy bill is expected to go to a House vote this week with the U.S. Congress reportedly aiming to have it on U.S. President Donald Trump's desk before Christmas. To stay up to speed with the latest news, download the Weon app and subscribe to our YouTube channel.